All right. So I got home. I got an argument with my mom. She slapped me across the face. She began to hit me. She started beating me. I didn't like it. So I strangled her to death. We typically think of violent criminals as being adults, but that's not always the case. Sometimes children commit heinous acts. Evil doesn't care about age. Here are five times when evil children realize they've been caught. Gail Clevenger. We begin on November 2nd, 2018, in DeBerry, Florida, where police officers responded to a 911 call reporting a burglary. They would uncover one of the most shocking murders in Florida history. The call was placed by 15-year-old Gregory Ramos, and he met police outside the family home when they arrived. He was very emotional. I copy, thank you. Uh, Lane Clevenger. Clevenger? Where does she work? She works in an architecture firm up in Orlando. Is she normally home this time of day? No, she gets home at 6, 6.30. Okay. Does she actually leave for work before you? She, she dropped me off, and then she usually just heads back to the sunrail and hops in the train with her bike. And Does anybody else live here once again? My dad and my two step-siblings. Where are they at? Um, my dad is on a visit trip in Seattle. He'll be back this afternoon at 6, 6, 6 30. Okay. And then the two step children have their moms. Okay. But every, everything is gone. As the officers enter the house, it's immediately clear that almost everything inside has been destroyed. The closets are emptied out. Every kitchen cabinet has been rifled through and there's glass all over the floor. After seeing the bizarre condition of the house, they were skeptical of Gregory's story, but they never would have guessed what actually happened. An officer speaks to the neighbor, who tells him that he hasn't seen anything out of the ordinary and that Greg and his mom had a good relationship. Just so I do have a key to their house, but I haven't been up here since yesterday evening or after you and I spoke, yeah. I talked to his parents. Okay. As I told him, this young man has some depression problems really bad. Has she had any issues with him lately? Or? No, not that I know of. While they processed the scene, they decided to take Greg to the station where he'd be more comfortable. He was a member of the Police Explorers, a program for young people interested in law enforcement, so he was comfortable around police officers. Greg sat in a room with his program sponsor, Ken Jones, and Sergeant A.J. Paglieri. Jones noticed the boy had bruises on his face and asked about him. What happened here? I uh, got in a fight yesterday with one of my friends. I didn't see that yesterday. I had makeup on. Right. Um, the, uh, it was a conversation with my friends. We got into a disagreement, and but it, I solved the problem. I talked it out with him, and we made up, and he apologized for hitting me, and I accepted his apology. What was his name? We hugged it out. Um, my friend, Joe. Joe, did the SRD know about the fight? The who? No, this was there was no fight. He just oh. like, he just came up. He's like, Greg, and I was like, what? And he, he kind of punched me. He's like, what the hell, dude? I didn't hit back or anything. It was just, right. and I was like, okay, well, calm down. Let's talk it out. We talked it out. And was just, well, what's Joe's last name? As the sergeant begins his questioning, he knows that Greg is hiding something because he's acting nervous. A couple things. As you can see, I, I see that you keep looking at my recorder, so everything that I do, obviously, is recorded. Okay? Plus, you see the camera up in the thing there. The sergeant shifts the questioning to Greg's relationship with his mother. Greg has a story ready to go, and he intends on sticking to it. How would you say your relationship is with your mom? It has its ups and downs. Okay. I think everyone argues a little bit with their mom. Okay. I, we love each other a lot, and I really hope she's okay. Have you ever been in trouble with the law before or anything? No, sir. No? Okay. How about trouble in school? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm just getting back before we get into things. That's all I'm trying to do here. So, like, trouble at school, like how? So I'm trying to think about what it was. Last month, mm -hmm. I got ISS and OSS for a day. What is that, sir? I don't know. Um, ISS is in school suspension. OSS is out of school suspension. Okay. Why? What happened? The, the weekend beforehand, my friend was feeling ill. So I went to go, I snuck out of my house to go talk to him. And I talked with him and my friend 
smokes cigarettes and he gave me some to take home with me. I put some on my backpack and I forgot to take them out. So when I was searched randomly at my school, mm-hmm. they were found. And how'd your mom feel about that? She was not happy. You talk about ups and downs in your, your mom's relationship, right? So that would probably be one of the downs, I would assume. No, because she was justified in her anger. The officer needs to find out if Greg has ever been violent towards his mother. How do you deal with it when she goes off on you? I've gotten better at it. You've gotten better at it? I used to get really angry and emotional, but I've kind of realized that's not worth it. Well, that's the only way to deal with it. Greg admits that when he got home, he found the house burglarized, but changed his clothes. Okay, what happened this morning? I slept in. My alarm was not set. She woke me up around 6.20. I sleep in my clothes. So what you're wearing right now is what you wore to school? No, I changed shirts when I got home. Okay. I was sweaty. He says that he's most upset that his mom is gone, suggesting he knows she's not coming back. What's the third thing? I noticed uh, my... I have a 25, I forget the weight on it, but it's a hunting legal combat bow. It's a combat bow. Compact bow. Do you mean that? Yeah. I think it's a phone call. Actually, someone needs to talk to me. You can talk to Detective Jones. After Paglieri steps out of the room to take a phone call, Greg can't hold back any longer, and the truth starts to come out. What do you think my house will not be a crime scene? I don't know. Sometimes it takes hours, sometimes it takes almost a day and a half. I know you've worked cases like this before. I have. It takes a while sometimes. And the more information you can give them, the better off it is. You know, they need to know what to do, where to go. I made a lot of bad decisions in my life. With regards to other things. Yeah. And it's just... Gregory is trying to sound smart by helping the officers piece together the crime scene. But it just makes him look like a psychopath since they already know what happened. Why do you think that? Because... Uh, either that or they or they somehow forced the door open, but the, it, it had to be a strong enough force to break this, like, to break, like, a, to break a lock, basically. It has to be strong enough to do that. Sure. So, so did you think that... Yeah. The, uh, the force and everything you're talking about here, is this because of that, based off your explorer training? Um, common sense. Common sense. I'm just assuming, just thinking out loud, like, you have to be able to be, like, either strong enough or there needs to be, like, a certain amount of force for the, for the wood, like, a door frame to, like, basically, like, crack and, like, make, like, make the lock give out. Sure. As Greg Paglieri tries to get a confession as quickly as possible by backing Greg into a corner with his questioning. Detective Jones was talking about the marks to your face. And Correct. I, I want to talk about that a little bit more. Right. All right. When did that happen? Can I ask what relevance this has to the conversation? Everything is relevant, Greg. You know, they're going to say, hey, listen, you know, Greg's mother's missing. Greg has marks on his face. Is it possible that Greg got in some kind of altercation with his mother? Right? They're going to ask me that. Yeah. Paglieri is getting frustrated by the lies, so he turns up the heat. Why would you lie to me about stu- stupid as biology? Because I don't want you to have a bad opinion of me. Because I want you to understand. I've done a lot of wrong things mm-hmm. in my life. And I acknowledge that. I don't make the best decisions. But if something serious as this, or my mom is missing, I need, I, need it, I need you to, you know, not have a bad opinion of me. My opinion of you, Greg, is whatever you tell me. My job is not here to make judgments, good, bad, or indifferent. My job is to get as much as I can from you to help find your mother. Now, when you lie to me, even if it's a little bit, yeah, you lose some credibility. And you can get all upset and cry about it. Mm-hmm. That's just the way that it goes. No, I get it. You hear what I'm saying? No, I hear what you're saying. And then I get these things about, well, who's who's the guy that drove you? I don't know. Brian something. Well, I, I didn't lie to you. I legitimately forgot his name the first time I was talking about him. These things that you tell me, right, especially when you're not in, uh, when you're not in school. Greg senses the walls are closing in on him, so he decides to tell the detectives a story, thinking he can talk his way out of the hole he's in. But that's what got him there. Around 11 o'clock on Thursday, I went to sleep. But I didn't really go to sleep. I just kind of went to my room and turned off the lights. I don't know, I'm not allowed to have my phone in my room due to something we'll discuss soon. So 
I go at 11. No, what 11? I probably, I waited until 12.30 until I went to my mom's room and got my phone. Greg finally describes the scene when he arrives home. He seems to really think this is helping his cause. And keep in mind, they've been talking for hours by this point. It's pretty much the same. I noticed my mom's car was there. The lights were on. I walked into the house. Everything was everywhere. Door busted and all that shit, whatever. I already told you. Went through my house, looking for my mom. Wasn't anywhere to be found. Blah, blah, blah. Call the police. Once again, Paglieri tries to just cut to the chase. And these guys, Dylan and Brian, dropped you off today. At your house. Well, they, I told you they dropped me off at. Uh, right here. When Dixie? Or no, uh, where's the, the, where the hell are you talking about? Where's that place they said they dropped you? This is High Banks. So they dropped me off here. And I walked the rest of the distance. So it's not possible that Dylan and Brian came to your house after they dropped you off, stole your shit, and killed your mom. Is that possible? Well, I'd see them drive past me. Okay. Well, I'm just, I have to ask because, again, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, what the hell happened to your mom? They, no, they're all they're they're definitely accounted for because I had because I, I saw them throughout the school day, and so if this whatever happened to my mom, I don't even know what the fuck happened. But whatever happened to my mom, it happened during the school day, obviously because when I got home, she wasn't there, and the house was ransacked. So obviously something whatever. After claiming he was drinking with his friends Dylan and Brian, Dylan is about to take center stage and give his story to two other detectives. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. What's going on, man? Not much. How you doing, Dad? I'm Steve Wheeler. I'm a detective with the Sheriff's Office. Detective Mike Cox. How are you? Pretty all right. How you doing? Mind if we have a moment of your time? Yeah. You have an, you already have an idea of what we're doing? Anybody contact you about anything? No. Okay. Have you talked to Greg today? I saw him at school. Are you, how good of friends are you guys? I mean, I talked to him, but we're not, like, super, super close. Officers then turn to Brian to see if any of this matches up. How you doing, sir? Are you Good. Brian? Shut up! Yeah. Hey, Brian, I'm Detective Wheeler. This is uh, Detective Johnson. Yeah. We need to talk to you. So if you come in and talk to him. Uh, here, let me step out real quick. Sorry, you just woke me up. Sorry, man. All right, well, here's the deal, man. Here's We need to talk to you about uh, that burglary happened over at Greg's house today. Yeah. You know anything about it? Uh, He messaged me that something happened. That's all I've heard, though. Yeah. Did you see Greg today? That's cool. What time? Uh, From last I saw him was lunch. Did you see him after lunch? What? Did you see him after lunch? No, I was in class. Dylan proves that Greg was lying by admitting he has his bow. Greg listed the bow as one of the items that were stolen from his house. Has he given you anything to hold of his from that house? Last week, he let me borrow a bow if you want that. Before long, the truth is squeezed out of Brian, and now both boys have claimed that Greg admitted he killed his mother. There's two other parties involved. It's not just you, okay? So, so it's not like we came here blind, blind looking for answers. Yeah. I can tell that by how much you guys already know and all that, so. Just tell us what he said. He said that he's telling me that I got an argument. But not really argument, but he he did. He told me that, like, it's hard to say. It's just honestly. Say it. Just say it. Just say it. We've probably already heard it. Just, yeah, just he said it. that he killed his mother, and I didn't really believe it, so. Okay. All right. Knowing the truth, Paglieri confronts Gregory with it to see how he'll react. Well, here's what I want you. I'm going to do this. I want you to look at my eyes. Okay? I'm going to get like this. And I'm going to ask you, did you kill your mother, take things from your house, distribute them amongst your friends, come in here today and lie to my face and say that you didn't do that? No. No what? I didn't do that. You didn't kill your mother? No. Okay. Finally, Gregory loses the will to keep lying and tells the truth about what happened. All right, I'll tell you what happened. All right, so I got home. I got an argument with my mom. She slapped me across the face. She began to hit me. She started beating me. I didn't like it, so I strangled her to death. I put her in a wheelbarrow. I put her in my car. I took the car. I had a mental breakdown where I was committing to three times. As he continues, he tries to rationalize it, even justify it. I think you have to realize that with my mom beating up and hitting on me, it wasn't like, me being like, ah, oh, I've waited ages for this, and then I kill her. No, this was extremely out of impulse, out of me getting beaten the shit out of me. So I just was like, you know, I'm done with it. So I grabbed her neck and I strangled her. When did you strangle your mother? I don't know, 12, 12, 30. 
all three boys were taken to the Department of Juvenile Justice, and they were talking as if they had no idea what was going on. After arriving at the center, Brian's family posted his $100,000 bond. Dylan remained in custody for 309 days until he was offered a $200,000 bond but was unable to pay it, so he remained in jail. Gregory Ramos was charged as an adult for the murder of his mother and was sentenced to 45 years in prison with parole eligibility after 25 years, but will spend the rest of his life on probation regardless. Gregory was only 15 years old at the time of his crime, and the boy in our next case is even younger. 13-Year-Old On March 3, 2023, police were dispatched to a house in Sarasota, Florida, after the mother of a 13-year-old boy called the police to report her son had been missing for days and had warrants for his arrest. As police approached the house, the boy's guardian seems to be in pretty good spirits, considering the circumstances. The 13-year-old boy wasn't as excited to see the officers. Hello. Hello. Oh, there he is. What? You returned home, right? Yeah. All right. Good call. I guess you were missing. We had to come check on you and make sure you're okay. Came home yesterday. I stayed at night at somebody's house. Okay. Where have you been staying? That was a All right. Is uh, mom here? Oh, I'm the guardian. You're the guardian? Okay. All right, well, Ladarius, you gotta come with us. Oh, oh, no, 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 Listen, let me tell you something. He has Start a hundred. I bet he knew. Yeah. I bet he, multiple warrants. I bet he knew. Okay, but this the light. This the light. He wanted to be in. I, I can, but get, I can guarantee you, I wasn't hurting him. Okay. Well, at least you did it. We have to. Yeah. We have to control him. Look, look. You can say what He's, you want. We have to control him. Okay. We have to control him. I understand. Yeah. But it looked like you yeah, was on but, top of him. That's all I was saying. Yeah, you do is get off. And I was not. That's what it looked like, so I just started. And I was not. So don't get that. And you'll Listen. see on your... Listen, Listen. 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 The officers are struggling to keep the boy in the squad car. He doesn't understand they may be doing him a huge favor by removing him from an obviously bad environment. <laughs> Ladarius was charged with resisting arrest with simple assault, as well as charges relating to the original warrant involving a burglary. We stay in Florida for our third case, but the charges are much more serious. Turns traffic stop into murder warrant arrest. Officers in Okaloosa County, Florida conducted a traffic stop on a 17-year-old man on March 12, 2022. They discovered he had a warrant for his arrest for murder. Officers stopped the car due to the illegal tent on the front windows. They soon discovered why the driver needed it. Thanks, man. Good. We got stop you for your tent. It's too dark. I'll put tent meter out for you. This would be good. So on the front, you can have 28%. Okay. On the back, you can have 15. You're reading the 16, which is too dark on the front. Huh? 28. And the lower the number, the darker. All right. All right. And then we, when you look at this, your ass one line's right here. It's too low on the front. So it, it'd just be a warning for all, but that's what it's for. You got your license on you? You got yours on you too, sir? You don't have yours? What's your first name? Oh, thank you. And it work on your insurance if you got it. What's your first name, sir? Me? Yeah. Oh, Darnell. As the officer waits to get the driver's information, he smells marijuana on him. Do you have a medical card? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. You, it, so it's valid? 
Huh? Okay. You want to fill it up? 265. Well, the problem is you got the odor of burnt marijuana coming from it. So you're not allowed to smoke in the vehicle. The officer is doing a good job of keeping the situation calm and relaxed, considering the suspect is under immense pressure, even if it doesn't seem obvious. Anything on you? No. no. Sweet. I don't see anything. No, you, you're pants down below your waist. I don't worry about no yeah, guns or anything. No weapons yeah. like that, right? No weapons. <laughs> it was okay if I just patched down for weapons. That's it. Is that okay? Yeah, you're okay. Okay. Take that away from me. Reach real quick. Hang tight with him. It's Deputy Stewart. Okay. Um, good, I'll go through through that, and then, like I said, if there's just a little a roach or something like that, we'll work on education and get you out of here. Okay. okay. Let me. Uh, y'all get to sit back down. Um, you cold? Hell yes. Yeah. It's yeah I'm getting, this is cold as hell right now. All right. Uh, no charges. I'm not charging anybody. Smoking in a vehicle and having it not in a container are both violations. They're still criminal violations. Okay. Um, but I'm going to do a report and destroy that. The officer asked the boys to identify themselves and everyone's mood changes. Because of the narcotics investigation and everything, you're required to give us your, your name. Okay. We'll give you one opportunity to give me your real name. Because that the what you've given me isn't returning. The, the, the name you've given me when I run it through the system isn't coming back with a Florida license. Spell your first name again. Okay. Spell your middle. Trevor T R E V O R. And then your last. Right. W R I G H. Okay. And it's a Florida license. No, sir. The officers will soon find out why the passenger gave a fake name. And it's likely not what they expect. Talk to you down here, Miss Thor. Hey, Todd, with I'll get you out of here with warnings. I ain't gonna go back on what I told you already. He's given us a name that isn't returning, which would mean it's not him. Are you from Illinois? Yes, sir. Okay, you're from, where, where in Illinois? Chicago. Chicago. You're from Chicago. When did you come down to Florida? Uh, he doesn't have a license out of Florida. He's 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 gonna have something. What what's his name that you know of? What's his last name? Right here. I don't, I don't honestly know. That's why I'm asking. Like, really okay. Honestly. How do y'all know each other? That was just my best friend's brother. Like, okay. Uh, a couple, he years, have a couple years ago. Did you go to school here and everything? Like, uh, finish up school or what? I mean, no, I haven't. Just a couple years. How, how old are you? You're 18. Mr. Darius Wingate has just created a hole for himself that he can't climb out of. Okay, because that's what you didn't stutter on. I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna, Let me see the license. No, my, what? I'm oh, 17 no years old, sir. Oh. But my birthday is May 24, 2004. I ain't gonna go back on my word. I, I gave you that one warning, okay? This will come back with a picture of you. Yes, sir. No warrants. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, and it's Florida. Dude, you understand you guys would be out of here and we wouldn't have been doing it. You almost caught a resistance and all kinds of stuff. Like, I it was just, fixing to I go first, south. I, I get it. But just realize, I've explained everything to y'all the whole way through. Have I not? You, you can't ask for more than that from me. You know what I mean? Hang tight. Don't stand up. The officer returns with some bad news for Darius. You got warrants? Yeah. Anything on you? No weapons? We already patted you down. You got a murder warrant, dude. It's You got, like, a... A sell marijuana and a burglary with a weapon and all kinds of stuff out of Niceville. Wait a I want to say it's a murder warrant. It may not be the actual warrant. You may be wanted for questioning this for something in the in a murder. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Yeah. I mean, you had to know about the warrants. I swear to God, I did not know about the you, you got one. So just go ahead and stand up with me, and we'll get you... He's got one more trick up his sleeve before they get him in the car. Three fifteen to forty. There's other uh, extra cuffs on. I'm gonna ask you again. Do you have anything in your pants? Yes, sir. Okay. Thirty-seven. You cancel traffic. After giving a fake name, lying about having a warrant, trying to run, and possessing crack cocaine, the officers remained professional. Darius may not feel it, but he got very lucky. 
This could have ended very badly for him. Can I, can I get my phone in my... Hang, oh. hang tight. Can I please just get Do it one thing at a time. Right? There, hang one tight. Thing at a time. Go ahead and sit up with them, and they're going to get you in the car. These may be too tight. We'll check them when you get up, okay? I get you. Ow. It ain't going to change the outcome with you, huh? He's got warrants and, and some other dope on him. Okay, so... One second. Huh? One second. He Darius was charged with possession of cocaine with intent to distribute and resisting arrest. He remained calm, considering the charges against him. The suspect in our next case went crazy over $50. Severe meltdown over $50. On December 18, 2022, officers in Seminole County, Florida responded to a call from a homeowner regarding a domestic disturbance between her and her daughter who was late with a $50 rent payment. What ensued when officers arrived was crazy. Police arrived expecting a reasonably calm misunderstanding between a mother and a daughter. Apparently the daughter was coming off a long night of partying and wasn't interested in listening to anyone including the police. They had an argument when I was at the store mm -hmm. about $50. What 21-year-olds you know live in a house and pay nothing? I'm doing y'all a favor. Uh, you gotta kick her out. That's the only way she's gonna learn. Otherwise, she's gonna be here at 40. So this reoccurring problem? No. no. She had a handle on it, and I think something happened at work. And, and then alcohol. I told her. The alcohol, yeah. She doesn't know how to drink, really. Probably she overdrank, but she just keeps on going. After mom is able to give the police some backstory, the daughter finally makes an appearance, and she makes sure everyone hears what she has to say. Yeah, I got this shit. And um, mind you, I pay bills, so in early ass in the fucking morning, I'm getting tried because I am no. doing what I can out of 20 years old, and you will do the same fucking thing now. Granny, I pay bills. Stop screaming. I pay bills. And no, no, no. I, I will. I will. I am. I am. I am. I am. But I pay bills. I pay bills now. Granny, I can look crazy all the I want because I'm the one who pays bills. I'm the one who paid cable. I'm the one who's 21 years old. I promise. I will pay check one. Why is your mouth like? Other than you? What are you? Other than you? Other than you, and this really is an interaction with my mother. I pay her bills. Based on her demeanor and the way she's talking to the officers, it seems like she's still drunk from the night before. Her. No, no. Yes, you are. No, 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 no. That's the f shit. So I pay not, for her bills, and I'm sitting, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here by the end of the you're day, like sitting on my right TV. Now. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Right now. Because I pay bills. So for you're supposed to leave right now. Rain it, rain it, yes, right now, so right now. pack up and grab and go. Rain it. You're not making any sense. Rain it. I pay bills. She Cares. does. It's great. It's great. Don't touch um, me. You saw her, right? In less than three minutes, she's in cuffs, but she's not done making things difficult for herself. She's just starting. Leave and don't come back. 16 years old. Did we call? Did we call? Did we call? Yo, yeah, call me. Call me. Come here. What is your bank account? No, I don't. You want to know what I don't. You want to know what I don't. You don't want to like f***ing utilize, but I will walk into the front Stop. of the pub. Stop. Stop. Stop resisting, bro. Because this is the second time you have utilized a cop on my Stop. ass. Look, look, you won't see me move. You won't see me move. Because I am utilized. Ariana is being so unruly that the officers brought out the mask to protect them from spitting and biting. Stop. Give me your head. Stop. Just follow directions. Give me your Just head. Just do it, okay? I'm gonna need one Babe. of y'all over here. Dude, I am I'm not moved here. You have no right to put me on a fing mask when I'm Stop. adult. Okay. Dude, you're dude, gonna get charged with battery. Dude. Reasons, dude, you're gonna get charged for battery if you do that. Ariana. Dude, you have no right to put me in a f***ing mask. Finally, they got her in the vehicle and took her to jail. Ariana was charged with domestic battery, resisting arrest, and disorderly intoxication. 
She was a difficult arrest, but at least she didn't try to flee on a bike like the suspect in our final case. 18-year-old cyclist. We're staying in Seminole County for our last case involving a teen who failed to stop at a stop sign and then fled police on February 8, 2020. The cyclist thinks he doesn't have to obey the officer's commands, so he has to show him that he actually does and he takes pursuit. No, you didn't. Yeah. Why are you doing me? Because I'm putting you in handcuffs. What the uh, Do not sorry. fight me. Do I'm not sorry. fight me right now. Wait, we're, sorry, we, we, we're in the right. Okay. What are you doing, man? And then I told you to stop your bikes and you didn't stop. Dude, we didn't hear you. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, this, this is a young guy. This is a what? A young guy. Yeah, we're just a young guy. Okay. Yeah. What, what First time for you. Right? Hear you. Who did you I told you to stop. You kept on going. Yeah, but if he doesn't hear you. Yeah. I have lights and sirens on. Right, but if he doesn't hear you, the wind's in our ears. We can barely hear anything, especially with all this stuff on. Yes, you know, once we did okay. hear you, we did pull over. Today is so. not the time for roadside jury, okay? What was that? None of the crowd agrees with the officer, but no one else is under arrest so far. Today is not the day for roadside jury. Y'all can move on. Well, he's a minor. That's his son. Then you can stay here. The rest of y'all could go. Do you have any weapons on you? Do you have your ID on you or anything? Why I have a weapon, man? What the f I'm asking you a question. As time passes, the crowd starts to get aggressive and make the scene difficult. No, y'all are over here interfering with my investigation. I'm trying to talk to him and y'all are over here talking. What's your ID number? By yes, law, you have to you. give me your ID now. By law, we don't have to do anything. The officer and the boy's father talk for several minutes as the officer wants to make it clear what the situation actually is. Hey, Brother, hey, I have no choice. Hey, hey, he's a good boy, man. I understand he's that, but... Boy. You want me? You want me? I know. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I'm a father, too. I don't yeah, want my I child mean, to go I mean, to jail. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a good boy, man. Yeah. Yo pido disculpas, a ver, I'm a Polish, a... I know. Sorry, I got the radio. What were you saying? You want me? You want me? Hello. You know. Okay. Finally, the biker is taken back to the station for booking. The 18-year-old biker was charged with fleeing and resisting arrest.